Hey guys, Mark Allen here for BH Spring Solutions. We have a multi-purpose video for you here today. It's going to be a partly explanation of um, several products for uh, high power pistols from BH Spring Solutions and bhspringsolutions.com and part tutorial video. We're going to try to capture in this video as much of the how-to as uh, we can. Um, this uh, centers around the Tissos Regent BR9 um, high power pistol. However, much of what we're going to cover applicable to all high powers regardless of manufacturers, the Browning high powers and all the clones. And what we're doing here right now is we're going to show you the components of a new product from BH Spring Solutions called the Tissos Regent BR9 Ultimate Optimization Kit from BH Spring Solutions. And that's partly what you're looking at on the table right now. This uh, Regent BR9 is the 7,000 round now tested uh, by BH Spring Solutions um, pistol. And uh, we have videos that show 6,000 rounds when this pistol got too hot to shoot. It got dropped in buckets of water over 30 times. And uh, we'll be talking about that a little bit throughout the uh, video as well. But uh, mainly this is to show you, give you some uh, helpful pointers and tips um, about uh, transforming this Tissos pistol, which we now have returned to pretty much stock uh, uh, configuration. Um, and configure it the way that we had this pistol configured uh, for the 7,000 rounds now of testing and the last thousand rounds that we did were 100% function perfect. And we're gonna uh, dive right into this and I wanna cover a couple things and um, clear some things off the table so that we're not so overwhelmed with uh, product and things on the table. First of all, I wanna show you one thing I can get off the table here, this box we have what are called fast access gun holding magnets um, and they, those come with the mounting screws. Those are what you're seeing right here on uh, what I've made as a portable uh, pistol smithing board, if you will. And that's what's holding this Tissos pistol here on the board right now. We've got those at bhspringsolutions.com. Click on the tools tab ultra handy. That's one thing we can get off of the table here real quickly. Another thing in that Tissos Regent BR9 Ultimate Optimization Kit uh, is included a polishing kit and throughout this video we will be kind of pointing out some points that are polishing points. Um, and this polishing kit comes with that. It's also sold separately. This is our basic polishing kit. Comes with a coarse and a fine polishing compound, eight polishing bobs, instructions on how to use uh, polishing rouge compounds like this and everything is complete for you um, to really optimize the polishing uh, of all metal to metal uh, relationships or uh, metal to metal mating, mating uh, components in the uh, pistol. So that's one of the components. We're going to get that off of the table as well. And another one of the components that you're looking on the table that comes with um, the Tissos Regent BR9 Ultimate Optimization Kit is our Master's Tools Kit. We're going to be using those and showing those throughout this video, but that kit looks like this. That's one of our best selling items, and it comes with every tool you need to properly detail strip and reassemble a uh, high power pistol. We'll be looking at that as well. Um, one thing that's easy to start talking about, first of all, is the grips um, and the uh, uh, stock grips that come on the uh, Tissos Regent pistol. Um, this pistol has been of course confirmed cleared and uh, we have a magazine here but it is empty. And the first thing I wanted to talk about, we're going to do this almost in reverse order of what you would expect, but I want to show you uh, and talk about grips for the high power pistol. BH Spring Solutions has some alternatives and these are the stock grips that come with the Tissos pistol. This uh, right grip is not going to be compatible with any ambidextrous safety and we're going to be installing the uh, safety fast shooting system and it has an ambidextrous safety and these are not compatible grips and it's th these are really attractively nicely done grips but they're not tactical and they're not functional um, in terms of an optimal standpoint and I want to explain why real quick if you take a look at this grip frame profile if you take a look at the grip frame of the high power pistol it's a rectangle when your hand grips 
a handgun. You can do your hand just like I'm doing mine right now, and it does not create a rectangle. In other words, holding on to something that's rectangular is not nearly as, uh, as uh, ergonomic for your hand as something that creates roughly the shape of your hand when you grip uh, a handgun. So we're going to be talking a little bit about that. One of the first things we're going to be doing is the grips are going to be coming off of this Tissos Region BR9. Here on the table in front of me, these pin punches that you see here, this is our master's pin punch tools for high power pistols. Um, that includes 330 seconds roll, and stand, roll pin and standard pin punches. Um, 560 force, which in many of ap applications, that 560 force pin punch is exactly the right pin punch for uh, a lot of the pins in all high powers. Uh, in both standard and roll pin punch versions, uh, the 564 and then 116 standard and roll pin punch versions. 330 seconds nail punch, which is our step one for the removal of the trigger pin. Um, we have a rubber washer protected um, 330 seconds, um, we call it a cupped out head um, punch that's stage two of your uh, trigger pin removal and a 1 16th starter punch which that saves your uh, saves your uh, 1 16th pin punches so we're going to go ahead and get the uh, stock tissues grips off of the table one of the other things that we're going to get off the table here in a second this is the actual grips that we used in that 7,000 round test these uh, grips were on the pistol virtually the entire time these are the RDIH uh, tactical ergonomic shooting grips from BH Spring Solutions. These are very compatible with the Tissos pistol. These come as an inclusion with your uh, Tissos Regent Ultimate Optimization Kit. And I'm not going to install them right now, but I'm going to show you kind of what they look like. And again, this is the pair uh, or the set, uh, the grip set that was used for that 7,000 rounds, 30 times in and out of water. Uh, during that test, the heat from the slide migrated into the entire pistol, into the grip frame, and these grips look just like new. These are excellent because they give you a nice finger groove relief uh, here on the front. They create uh, optimal placement for your thumb here on both sides of the grip. And by the way, with the high power pistol, if you've got this um, correct placement for your thumb. If you can point that thumb at close range, you're also pointing where the bullet's going to land. So these really were enjoyable grips. They held up perfectly throughout that 7,000 rounds of uh, testing. That's the RDIH grip. Those grips come standard with your uh, ultimate optimization kit for the Tissos Regent BR9 and those grips we're now going to go ahead and get off of the table and ultimately when we're done today we're going to be installing these BH Spring Solutions Masters grips and I want to give you just a quick preview of these because these are these have been an evolution of a grip but we should have uh, known the combination to make the best high power grips in the very beginning um, we should have known it because we should have looked to John Browning's um, styling of grips. Take a look at the profile of those grips if you would. That is the profile of a 1911 grip, which John Browning did design. And um, we finally settled on that profile. These are compatible with your uh, Tissos Regent BR9 pistol. And I'm not going to screw these in right now but I am going to place them on the pistol uh, and show you what type of a grip frame profile these create when they're installed. And remember that shape I was making my hand into? Isn't that about the shape that you saw uh, when I held my hand up and put it into this kind of a shape. And uh, we think John Browning knew that with the 1911 and um, that's why we settled on this particular profile. When I wrap my hand around the grip from either side, uh, I do have correct placement of the thumb. It's horizontal and 
um, parallel with the uh, with the barrel of the uh, of the firearm, and you see my hand wrapping around that grip frame with the uh, with the grips on the pistol. That has created a grip hold and a feel in the high power that's very 1911-esque. And these grips are excellent on the Tissos uh, Regent pistol. These grips were not um, optimal for going in and out of water 30 times, and that's why we did not use them in our 7,000 round test. Uh, but those are also available to you from bhspringsolutions.com. Uh, we have already uh, measured the trigger pull. Uh, remember, we've put this pistol now back to its uh, stock configuration. Again, confirming that we are empty and no ammunition present. I'm gonna go ahead and show you the uh, current trigger pull um, since we put this back to stock and that'll show you there. We're something north of about eight pounds. And that's pretty high for a uh, high power pistol. Now we have put this uh, pistol substantially back to stock configuration with all of the original pins, all the original springs, all the original parts. And um, we're going to talk about that trigger pull again when we're all finished uh, today. Uh, but remember that was about a eight and a quarter, eight and a half uh, ish. Um, on that uh, on that trigger pull. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to disassemble or do the field strip portion of uh, this Tissos pistol. This small bladed screwdriver I'm going to use to uh, demonstrate the magazine release and how that comes out. The magazine release is here. You're going to turn the screw while pressing in on the magazine release. You're going to turn this screw about a quarter of a turn and it's going to go ahead and release the magazine release. The original spring in here from Tissos is just massive. Um, relatively speaking, for everything we've ever seen in a high power, it's massive. And it creates a lot of resistance on the magazine uh, catch. And we did go ahead and put the BH Spring Solutions um, magazine catch spring. When you install yours, one of the things we want you to do is we want you to go ahead and just put a drop of oil or two on that spring as you install it and it installs. You see this tip right here on the uh, installation screw that uh, also retains the spring. You press it in, turn into the groove here and that BH Spring Solutions Mag Catch Spring is going to make this a much more reasonable mag catch function. Um, you will not be using the RDIH ambidextrous mag catch in your TISOS. Um, we did attempt that and there are some dimensional differences inside the grip frame compared to a Browning or FN high power and retention of the uh, magazine was not reliable. Um, so you'll need to use the single sided magazine catch but with the BH Spring Solutions magazine catch spring that's included in the spring kit that uh, comes with this ultimate optimization kit, um, you'll have the spring that's going to make that uh, a much more reasonable function just like the uh, FN Browning High Powers work. We're going to go ahead and get to the um, slide part of the, uh, the Tissos Regent BR9 and we'll go ahead and this is the original recoil spring from uh, Tissos Regent. Uh, the spring construction ends in what we call a cut coil on one end. On the uh, other end we have what is called a closing coil, but on this end we just have a cut coil. Uh, when we measured this spring, this spring is functional but just barely and when the slide is fully rearward this spring is also fully compacted and there's really no margin to it. Uh, and if it, normal margins with uh, mechanical, modern mechanical spring winding machinery is plus or minus 10% of your target. And if this production of spring is missed, you know, by 2% uh, compared to what this spring is, um, it, it won't allow the slide to come fully rearward. But um, so anyway, we've got a recoil spring from BH Spring Solutions uh, in this uh, ultimate optimization kit that we're going to go ahead and install um, later. So we'll get that out of the way. This recoil spring guide rod from Tissos went all the way through our 7,000 rounds. It was a uh, 
no problem part whatsoever. I'm going to go ahead and move the barrel. Um, if you've watched some of our other videos, this barrel did, did prove to be defective because of the location of the chamber relative to the bore. Um, uh, but we're not going to talk about that too much today. Um, one thing we will talk to you about, this polishing kit that comes with this product. Um, polished feed ramps always function better than non-polished feed ramps. And this polishing, this is a polished point right here. And really all into this um, entrance part of the chamber, polishing this area is a plus. Polishing this feed ramp, polished feed ramps have less collection points for that black stuff while you're shooting. And um, this is a good uh, polish point. We'll go ahead and set the barrel aside here for now. We're going to pop through the slide here real quickly. A um, couple things. This uh, Ultimate Optimization Kit does include uh, the BH Spring Solutions Essential Reliability Kit for uh, the Tissos um, Regent BR9 that includes um, several different parts, pins, springs that are necessities in the uh, Tissos pistol. We're going to be installing those as well. Um, I want to show you one thing real quickly that we saw immediately with this um, uh, Tissos pistol and that is here. This is your sear lever and you can see me pushing on it but it definitely requires me to push it. It's not really free um, and I'm uh, having to use a little bit of pressure to make that move. I want to show you this is an FN Browning and here I'm pushing and this is much more free and this affects your trigger pull and this sear lever rotates on a pin and one of the first things that I noticed when we first took the first Tissos pistol apart was wow that seems like there's some resistance on that um, on that sear lever so we immediately wondered why we're going to be getting into that right now. What you need is you need a 330 seconds roll pin punch uh, to go ahead and remove this sear lever pin. One of the nice thing about working with a little uh, portable bench like this, these magnets make great catchers for your uh, pins when you pound them out like I just did. Now, this was one of the very first things we noticed because it was one of the very first disassembly points of the Tissos Regent High Power. But if we can, I want to get you a close-up of that sear lever pin. Uh, that sear lever pin is collapsed on one end and bulged out on the other. Now, to help you understand the significance of that, we're going to go ahead and take the sear lever. You remember the sear lever? It pivots on this um, on this uh, sear lever pin and it pivots right at about that point right there and at that point right there I don't have free rotation on the sear lever and the reason is is because I'm past the point where it starts bulging this is a oversized or a, a mismade pin and we've diagnosed this one as one that is better off uh, replaced out of the pistol. So we're going to go ahead in our Tissos Essential Reliability Kit. We have an FN Browning sear lever pin. I want to show you the difference here because this is the sear lever pin that's been installed for that 7,000 round test that we did. Now it's been removed. We went ahead and put it back in the packaging and everything. But if you take a look, I don't know if it's possible to capture that in our video or not, but that sear lever pin it, it looks virtually brand new. It's not even collapsed anywhere, nor bulged anywhere. It's still just in perfect condition. So that's going to be the pin that we're going to go ahead and reinstall when we put this uh, sear lever back in. Now we have the sear lever out. Now we can get our uh, extractor out. This has been another kind of a problem point for the Tissos pistol. The right punch tool here for this pin is a 564 roll pin punch. And you're going to see the pin that you're going to be going for here. You can see it from the top of the slide here. You can see it from the interior part of the slide right there. So we're going to go ahead and pop that pin out. And we'll go ahead and 
get our extractor out. This is the original Tissos extractor. It lasted about 300 rounds in our test and it fractured. If we can show you here where it fractured, it's right at this point right here at the extractor claw. The extractor claw is now pointed upward. When we get a real close look at that uh, under a magnifier, we can see actual crackage of the uh, or cracking of the uh, metal at the extractor claw point. That's kind of a missed design, and the TISOS Essential Reliability Kit replaces out that extractor. So we'll be getting rid of that. Um, the TISOS uh, extractor spring, it is dimensionally shorter than the BH Spring Solutions extractor spring, and we measured the uh, strength of it. It does um, provide less pressure on the extractor and pressure on the extractor is important with this uh, particular spring so we're going to go ahead and replace that out all of these parts that we're replacing are all included in the TISOS essential reliability kit I want to get back to that extractor pin real quick I want to show you here's an FN extractor pin And here is the Tissos extractor pin. And if we can, I want to show you the difference in those. The difference is really in the length of them, if we can capture it. The FN extractor pin, just a little bit longer. This is going to help make sure you've got your pin fully through the extractor because the extractor is held by that pin through that hole. And we like the uh, little bit longer extractor pin that uh, the FN uh, extractor pins are. And those are included in the TISOS Essential Reliability Kit as well. Um, and finally, we've got a BH Spring Solutions extractor spring. So, um, and again, these parts that I'm showing you, all of these went through the 7,000 round test. We went and put the... Uh, the uh, original configuration in uh, just for this video. The extractor spring has a conical shaped tip on one end. In other words, the spring is wound a little tighter at one end and that goes on top. The wide end goes in the bottom. And now we're going to go ahead and put the new extractor in. And the way home on this is grab yourself the 564 standard pin punch and what you're going to do is you're going to use that uh, pin punch almost like a slave pin. And we're going to go ahead and kind of pin the extractor in place like that. And then we'll go ahead with our new extractor pin. And now we can just go home like that. 564 roll pin punch and is the right pin punch here and we have you want to check right here on the underneath side and you don't want to be seeing any of that uh, extractor pin coming into the slide area I went just a little bit too far we're going to tap back just a bit and now we are good And we're just below flush here. The extractor, the new extractor is now in. Um, one more ob ob item on the slide. You're going to take a look and you see here that is a fractured firing pin retaining plate. Uh, a new firing pin retaining plate is included in your TISOS Essential Reliability Kit. That firing pin retaining plate should look like that. Uh, something north of about 4,200 rounds through our test. Uh, we did fracture the OEM or the original firing pin retaining plate. This retaining plate removal tool is awfully handy from BH Spring Solutions. And it helps remove even a fractured retaining plate just that easily. But there's the difference you see between a fractured retaining plate and um, and one that's not, uh, the one that's all in one piece. So um, we're going to go ahead, we'll get rid of that. This firing pin from Tissos, that went through the entire 7,000 rounds, no problem. Inside here we've got a 
firing pin spring. Let me talk to you about firing pin springs here just real quickly. There are two different configurations in the slide in high power. So I'm going to grab uh, an FN Mark III slide and then we have, you see the difference. The difference is right here in the sear lever, this area. This is the newer, more modern design. It is a mechanical drop safety. When it's in this position, it blocks the firing pin from coming forward at all. When the trigger lever is pressed here, you see that paddle come up. Leon Hubert, the same man that invented the SFS system, also designed this adaptation for FN. When the trigger lever is pressed here, it trips the sear and it also uh, gets out of the way of the firing pin so the firing pin can uh, come forward. The TISOS does not have that mechanical drop safety. That being the case, your firing pin spring is your drop safety and it's your only drop safety. This we call a light firing pin spring. Um, in the TISOS Essential Reliability Kit, we're going to be providing you a heavy firing pin spring. You can kind of see the difference between these two. And this particular firing pin spring provides you almost four times the protection in the event of a muzzle drop uh, compared to the TISOS spring. So that spring that you're looking at was used throughout the 7,000 rounds of testing too. You drop your firing pin spring in here. And this tool that I showed you that is included with everything, we call it the RPT, your retaining plate tool. That tool is going to hold your replacement um, firing pin retaining plate we use that tool just like you're watching me do it. We press in the firing pin and just that quickly, by the way, this comes with instructions and um, that quickly the retaining plate is back in to the pistol. We have re replaced out our extractor, extractor pin, extractor spring. We're ready to go ahead and put our sear lever back in. Downside to these magnets, get anything close to it, the magnets do hold very, very, very well. Um, the way you're gonna put this extractor pin back in, grab your 330 second standard pin punch and you're gonna use it also kind of like a slave pin. Um, but one of the things that you notice immediately here is we don't have a problem with fit of that uh, sear lever. That was really a sear lever pin um, problem and we're going to go ahead and put our new sear lever pin in now and this pin will go in pretty much just like that. We'll get a 330 seconds roll pin punch from here. Again you're looking for just about flush and we're good to go. Inside our BH Spring Solutions uh, spring kit for the TISOS pistol, you're going to have a new BH Spring Solutions recoil spring. That, along with our recoil spring guide rod from the TISOS pistol, and reinstall the barrel, and we have completed optimization of the slide and the slide components. So now we can go ahead, set that out of the way. I do want to acknowledge that after 7,000 rounds, 30 times in and out of water, um, all the heat that we put this thing through, there were times this slide was blackened all the way back to this point. And, um, you know, I, anybody who's a gun guy, when they hear, well, they made a high power out of stainless steel has got to be asking, well, okay, well, just, okay, well, that's great. Well, just how good is that? Well, so far, the slide and the frame components, these things have cleaned up very, very well, and uh, we've had no catastrophic failures of the slide or of the frame, and um, that's, that's, a, that's a good positive point about the uh, TISOS pistol. At this point, we are finished um, doing our um, optimizations on the slide components, we're going to go ahead and we're going to move on to the frame at this point. Um, your frame is made up into two areas. You have your trigger subassembly area and you have your fire control group area. We're going to go ahead and take care of 
first the trigger subassembly area. This is where your nail punch comes in and that is what this, um, this uh, punch tool included in your kit in, uh, is. And this is the reason special tools are needed. This trigger pin on almost all high powers is just a beast. Now you have your step two trigger uh, pin punch. This is also kind of a cupped out headed punch, has a rubber protector, and this is gonna get our uh, trigger pin pounded farther and it's going to protect our frame with that rubber punch. Now we take a th standard 330 seconds pin punch and we are the rest of the way out. Now the Tissos Regent High Power has the High Power traditional magazine disconnect in it and what we're going to do here is we're going to press this magazine disconnect pad here. You see where I'm pressing it. When we press that in, we will be able to release the trigger lever. We're going to come a little bit rearward into the uh, pistol. We press that in, come to the side like I just did, trigger lever comes out. That's a, an original Tissos part that's been through the whole 6,000 rounds as well. This is the original Tissos trigger with the magazine disconnect installed. Um, and these are tough um, getting in and out of the pistol. There is just barely enough margin for that. This is the original Tissos trigger. We did not test with this past about 600 rounds because these edges of this trigger are sharp quite unrefined. It went through about six layers of skin on the side of my trigger finger. Never had that happen with the trigger, but feeling it here, that's a sharp edge. And um, so we did not opt to uh, test very long with the uh, OEM trigger. Um, for guys that are interested in how do I uh, not have a magazine disconnect in my high power, the way that you do that from this point is you're going to hold the magazine disconnect in and you're going to pound out that pin. And out is going to come your magazine disconnect device and the spring and you can replace that pin. I want to tell you about these pins in the uh, Tissos trigger. These are very interesting roll pins. You need a 564 inch punch and go slowly with them because um, these are odd uh, sized pins for a trigger in a high power and uh, you don't want to be running around looking to try to replace these pins because it's going to be a tough uh, it's going to be a tough thing to do anyway we're going to replace out that trigger we're going to replace it out with a cylinder and slide wide combat trigger those are also available at bh spring solutions and we're just going to go ahead and do that at this point we have the bh spring solutions two coil trigger return spring already installed in the cylinder and slide um, trigger I want to talk about the Tissos trigger pin. This is the pin that you just saw us pounding out um, very hard out of the Tissos pistol. And um, this is an oversized pin. This trigger pin hole in the Tissos is larger than in an FN Browning. You will not use an FN Browning trigger pin in, uh, in this application. It will almost fall right through. So uh, take care of this um, Tissos trigger pin. Um, the Tissos trigger pin is also oversized. It has to be because the hole in the frame there is oversized, but you're going to see that we've got this um, we've got this trigger pin to where we have nice free movement. We now have nice free movement because uh, we had to file the center of this trigger pin to get that nice free movement. And it's still tight going in and out, but the area where the trigger pivots on, that has been filed and it was necessary. We had to do that. Um, I wanna show you with the cylinder and slide trigger there is a nifty, easier way of installing this particular trigger, and that is you want to go ahead and set your trigger lever in the trigger, just like I'm doing right now. Right now, it's easy. We just put it in this area, 
and I'm going to rotate this trigger lever kind of forward like that. And now, if I can show that just like that, I've held the trigger lever in place here and we're going to slide the assembly right on up into the pistol just like that. We'll bring our tr trigger lever back uh, rearward just like that and we've installed that trigger without needing to do the acrobatics we would need to do after the trigger is in to get the trigger lever in. Okay, now we're ready for final installation of the trigger pin uh, into the trigger subassembly. And I want to show you a little homemade tool here. This is a big oversized pin punch, uh, about a 530 seconds, and a piece of Gorilla Tape on the end of it turned upside down. It really makes a good way to get this trigger pin reinstalled. And it's reasonable. So now we've got our trigger subassembly back in and we've got a nice trigger action and we're going to take care of a couple of other miscellaneous um, uh, type of frame things. Um, the first one I want to show you has to do with, we're going to demonstrate it like this, has to do with this frame area and the reason for a couple of tools a uh, little bit of an aggressive file and kind of a more finishing file. Um, and these are not available at BH Spring Solutions as of now. But what we're going to want to show you here is we want to show you this. On the uh, Tissos pistol, we found something actually the Yankee Marshall, a great friend of ours, found. And that was an area of the frame and it is right here. We have filed this area and the reason we did is because this area was literally forward of the feed ramp. We see this is an FN Browning. You see there's a lot more filing and this area finishes rearward of that feed ramp. So we did a little bit of filing here uh, on the Tissos in order to get that where it meets that um, uh, area of the feed ramp, um, we wanted to get that clear of um, uh, this area and get it rearward of that feed ramp. So that's the reason there for the uh, files here on the table. We'll go ahead and get those out of our way as well. And the other miscellaneous uh, frame thing is while we did our 7,000 rounds of testing, we did have our DIH's Picatinny rail um, involved. We're going to go ahead and reinstall that, but we wanted to show you what a robust part this is. And this is that Picatinny rail. It's feather light, um, so feather light that it doesn't change the natural pointing characteristics of the high power at all. Um, but it is stable to well over 200 degrees Fahrenheit, but this part had never been tested to the degree that we tested it included on our um, Tissos pistol. And um, we have a drilling uh, machine that uh, will drill a frame perfectly on a high power and the Picatinny rail is going to go right back on just like that. Normally this Picatinny rail would be made permanent with Loctite on the threads of the screws. We did not make it permanent during our 7,000 round test primarily because we wanted to be able to take it back off easily and take a look at the inside of it and make sure that uh, there was no degradation whatsoever and there was not. Um, so now we'll go ahead and we'll put that back into uh, place as well. That was the reason for the Allen wrench on the table. Now we have really addressed everything except the fire control group and we're going to be going ahead and getting to the fire control group now. The way that you take the fire control group uh, apart 
is we're going to start with this sear pin and it's located right inside the frame. We need a 3 30 seconds standard pin punch and we're going to go ahead and bring that out from the sear side or from the right side of the pistol and Those magnets are just wonderful. They just catch your pins so nicely. So at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to hold the hammer, remove, remove our pin punch, and we have our sear and sear spring. These are both out. This is the original sear. Now we're going to go ahead and let our hammer go forward like that. And at this point, we're going to be able to press up on our safety. You're going to need to rotate your ejector down. Now your safety is going to press up just like that. One word about this little nub of a manual safety that uh, Tissos put on their pistols. I want to go ahead and take this little assembly apart. You've got a little plunger piece here and inside you have a spring. That well is deeper than on an FN Browning. They had to make their spring longer than on an FN Browning. Um, no FN Browning safety lever spring or BH Spring Solution safety lever spring is going to be um, compatible inside this safety because they dug that uh, or machined that out um, deeper. So um, if you stay with this nub of a manual safety, you're going to be staying with that spring. The function's okay. Um, it's, it really has limited benefits as far as we're concerned. We're going to go ahead and set that aside here just for a second. This is the original TISOS ejector. That one went through the whole se uh, 7,000 round test. It's still in uh, great condition. One of the things that we found very, very quickly, the reason for the caliper on the table, in fact, is on this sear pin. The sear pin in the, in the um, uh, Tissos is tight in the frame. And we took an FN uh, sear pin and it is free somewhat in the frame like a sear pin like we would typically expect on a Browning High Power. So we noticed that and we thought, you know, wonder what that uh, dimension of that sear pin is. And so we measured it. And the Tissos sear pin came out at 2.53 millimeters. And the FN Browning sear pin comes out at 2.43 millimeters. So uh, a, quite a bit of a dimensional difference there. The other thing that we noticed was that when we put the safety fast shooting system in that is really compatible in all high powers, um, we found that the sear, which is really to FN Browning specs uh, in the uh, SFS system, um, it had a little bit of a compatibility um, issue with the, um, with the uh, TISOS uh, sear pin and we did not have that at all. We had really uh, good free um, pivot on the uh, sear pin with the FN Browning pin. So the difference in uh, that had us put the FN Browning sear pin in the TISOS Essential Reliability Kit, which again is part of the ultimate optimization kit for the uh, TISOS pistol. So we'll be going back with the FN Browning sear pin. Now, we're going to talk to you just a little bit about the traditional operating system of the um, TISOS pistol. One of the things we're going to explain to you here is this is the relationship that um, your trigger pull is based on. It is this sear being in front of this hammer. This sear is pressed downward like this and it allows the hammer to go forward home into the firing pin. This very large sear hammer tooth relationship is part of the reason for the challenges that the Browning High Power pistol's trigger pull got a reputation about. And I want to show you the difference here. This size of a sear hammer tooth relationship, particularly the size of the sear is where it shows up in the SFS system compared to the traditional operating system. 
and there's just no comparison. This uh, sear creates a tremendously clean, crisp trigger break. Um, we tested with that system for 7,000 rounds. We have no reason to think that this system that um, that TISOS has, which is the traditional operating system, would have any issues in a uh, 7,000 round test either. The SFS system is just a very uh, superior operating system, so that's why we used it. Um, if you are staying with the traditional operating system inside your um, ultimate optimization kit for the TISOS pistol is something called a mainspring tool. The mainspring tool works just like this. It works to help you to uninstall and reinstall this mainspring on the hammer strut. And I want to show you real quickly how that, uh, how that happens with this tool. First thing we're going to do is lock the tool in place like this. Then we're going to rotate the hammer on the hammer strut with the tool just like that. These instructions, by the way, come in uh, your kit. We turn down the strut nut and we remove out. This is a good place for a 1 16th pin punch. Uh, we remove out the uh, pin and then we unscrew the strut nut and we'll go ahead and we'll take out the Uh, TISOS mainspring. We're going to go ahead and replace that. Inside your kit comes three mainsprings, a 30, a 32, and a 26. Um, we're going to go ahead with the 26 uh, today in this TISOS and we'll show you how that installs right back on there. Now, this is not the operating system we used in that 7,000 round test. This is going to be first reassembled as the traditional operating system to show you how wonderful easy make this tool makes everything we're going to go ahead just compress the spring down and set the forks in the tool like that then we'll pull our hammer this way reinstall our strut nut. We're going to screw that down far enough to get our strut nut pin into place. Just like that. Then we'll pull our strut nut back up under the pin like so. And we have replaced our mainspring. Now that mainspring is going to provide us a little less pressure on the hammer sear relationship of the TISOS's um, traditional operating system and that should give us a little bit of a lightning effect on that trigger pull. So now we're going to go ahead and reassemble since we have went ahead and replaced that uh, mainspring. First thing when we do the traditional operating system is we want to go ahead and set the hammer into place. Bring the hammer strut right under, and we're going to try to show the positioning in the video. Should be just like that. Our hammer can be forward just like this. We will need to place our ejector in a 90 degree angle downward at first like that. Then we'll go ahead back with our original safety. Placed our ejector in this 90 degree downward position. Our hammer is forward. Our safety is partially the way in at this point. At this point, we should be able to press in on this plunger and press our safety home just like we just did. Now the rest of our work is going to be done with the ejector up. All right, we're ready to put the traditional operating system and complete it back into the TISOS Regent BR9. And we've noticed one other difference between the TISOS and the FN Browning. And we're going to show it to you right now. It has to do with this curvature of the grip frame. And this curvature of the TISOS just comes up and it angles kind of straight upward. 
the angle of a browning comes up and then it flattens. When it flattens like that, it allows the use of this tool just like that and this tool stays secure because we call this the third hand tool it stays secure because this beaver tail flattens out it does not flatten out on the uh, Regent BR9 so we're going to need a third hand uh, anyway however your wife will be much more amicable about holding on to this tool and then holding on to the hammer against the pressure of the mainspring. So you do have that going for you. Um, in order to put the traditional operating system back into place, we are going to need to hold back the hammer and we can do that with our third hand tool, but we're going to have to hold the third hand tool kind of in place like that. So I'm going to get a third hand into the picture and we're going to try to show you the easy way to put your uh, traditional operating system back together we're going to take our sear spring it has a button on it and that button goes just like this down in the grip frame and i'm going to try to show where we've positioned that if i can if we can see in the camera we positioned our sear spring with that little button just in that area right down here in the grip frame. Now we're going to hold that sear spring back. We're going to reinstall our original sear just like this. And we're going to hold it in place while we put the sear pin back into its position and it goes right through here like that. Now holding our sear back we should. Okay we've got our sear in place against the sear spring and we just found the hole in the sear and we are now home and the traditional operating system is back together. And what we're looking at right now is that sear pin. That sear pin needs to be flush on both sides of our frame, and now it is. And now we have our original operating system back together. We're gonna to go ahead and put our original operating system back into place real quickly. And I'm really interested at this point about how have we affected this trigger pull because now we have done a complete spring change out of the pistol and we're going to go ahead and see what does the trigger pull world look like to us now after we've done these modifications and we're down to six and a half pounds we were eight north of eight pounds before the spring change out and that pull was about six and a half that pull was about six and an eighth. So without doing any work on the hammer tooth and sear relationship at all, um, we haven't even polished those areas. You can polish those, polish the sear lever. Um, but um, you know, we've definitely impacted the trigger pull here, it appears, by about two pounds. And that's um, and that one pulled right at six pounds. So two to two and a quarter pounds off of the trigger pull. And that would be affected by the trigger. It would be affected by the trigger return spring. It would be affected by the sear lever and its relationship to that sear lever pin. Also by the sear pin that we replaced. All the, uh, a lot of the aspects of the, uh, of the, uh, uh, Tissos Essential Reliability Kit, the parts and pins and components that we put in there. Um, so that would complete a traditional operating system um, spring change out. And now we're going to go ahead and pop this traditional operating system back out of the pistol. And we're going to go ahead and install the uh, Superior SFS system uh, at this point. Now at this uh, point we can go ahead and just tap through the 
sear pin just like that. When we go to the SFS system, we are going to reuse the sear pin. Now at this point when we pull out, we're going to hold our sear spring and I also am holding uh, the sear and we'll go ahead and pull those out and all of our parts and pieces there will come free. We pull our ejector down 90 degrees and our safety comes out. We will not be reusing that, the ejector. We will be reusing the uh, original sear spring and the original hammer strut. We will not re be reusing either of those. We'll go ahead and set those aside. And we will not be trying to reuse the uh, third hand tool either um, with the SFS as an installation. And we're going to run right into the SFS installation now because now we have our complete fire control group out. We're going to reuse our ejector, reuse our sear pin. And at this point, now you're going to see one of the kinder and gentler installs uh, into a high power pistol. It is this SFS system. Uh, you're going to take your sear in this position and you remember how we had to compress everything up, get the sear pin in. This system starts with the sear pin which is really really nice because the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead hang the sear and press our sear pin just to the edge of where you see the sear now. In your SFS kit you have something called a return lever. That return lever looks just like this. We're going to start that return lever in this position because we're going for that position. And we're going to start it in this position. And we're going to come at it from this way with that sear pin. Bring the sear pin just far enough to cover the return lever. We brought our sear pin just far enough to get it through the return lever. Now we can let our return lever fall down low like that. We're going to come back with our ejector. The ejector has a hole there. That's for your sear pin. We're going to put it next to the return lever and finish the sear pin going through the return lever. And now we have all of our parts hung on the sear pin. That sear pin again has got to get flush with the frame and now it is. Now from this position, I'm going to try to reposition myself. We're going to take the SFS hammer strut and you see how we have our parts and pieces here on the sear pin. We're going to need to rotate again our ejector come from the underneath side of the frame with the hammer assembly and we're going to go up under the sear and the return lever and bring the hammer assembly into position. Okay, at this point we've positioned our hammer strut we're going to now rotate our ejector back into position, like here. And we are ready for our left side safety lever. And we're going to be able to we're going to be able to slide our left side safety lever into position just like that. If you have any interference with this left side safety lever coming all the way like that, it's right here just like that at the sear and now you see our safety lever has come home. And we have a cocking lever spring that needs to go into this area right there. If you can see 
that little recess in the safety lever is right here and our cocking lever spring is going to go right in that area. We want to make sure that little pigtail is oriented on top like it is right now. We can take our sear spring. This is kind of a handy little uh, moment here is you can take the tail of your sear spring, a little bit of pressure on this lever, and from here we can go up into the pistol and just like that, maintaining pressure, and we have now set that spring. When you get to this point, you're going to take your sear spring, and it's going to go up just behind the sear. And I don't know if we can show that, but this sear spring goes just behind the sear. And then we're going to press down the sear spring here and downward and it clicks and locks right in place. At this point we should have good SFS function and we do. We pull our safety lever down the hammer cocks. That brings the uh, safety lever back up. We're ready for our right side safety lever. Here's another nice opportunity for this handy nail punch is this pin and we'll go ahead and tap our safety pin in. This is also a good place for the 1 16th standard punch to finish off that pin which is now nice and flush and we're just about ready to reinstall our slide. In fact, we are. Now, we do not need to lock our slide back. This uh, SFS extended slide stop slides in without it. And it looks like all functions are right back to perfect. Do want to go ahead and we're going to measure our trigger pull here in just a second, but I have to see what this looks like with these um, BH Spring Solutions Signature Masters grips in place. Okay, we got our Masters grips in place and all functions are seeming very, very good. And we're going to do one final trigger pull. Nice, look at that. Five and an eighth is where the trigger pull came in. Remember, we started about eight and a quarter. And we'll give it one more uh, reading here on our scale. And uh, it's consistent. That one's about five and a quarter. So five and an eighth and five and a quarter. We've got a really nice, clean, crisp trigger pull um, at this point. That's what the Tissos Regent BR9 Ultimate Optimization Kit can do for your Tissos pistol, among other things. We do want to show you this Picatinny rail. can be used with Picatinny rail mount. That RDIH flashlight um, is activated with your shooting hand thumb, just like you saw it. It makes all of the functions still available. Uh, to my hand including the slide stop and comes on and off very very quickly and very very easily just like that and that is the end of our video for today i'm mark allen with bh spring solutions